Hey y'all, it's Paris and I'm back with another video. So today I just wanted to share with you guys my testimony about how God told me to quit my job and how he provided for me in the wilderness, y'all. I want to share with you guys how God did a breakthrough for me, okay? If you guys have been waiting on my breakthrough testimony, this is it, all right? So my story starts back in 2023, okay? So around August or September-ish um, of last year, God, God begins to share with me that that I'm about to quit my job, okay? And so God speaks to everybody differently, right? So even if I tell you, well, this is how God told me to quit my job, just know that he can speak to you differently, right? But anyways, sometimes God just gives me a knowing. Sometimes it's just, I just know this is something that God is telling me to do. It's not something that he actually said. Sometimes God just gives me a knowing. So God had just given me a knowing, me just knowing that I'm about to quit my job. And so fast forward to October of 2023, God starts to really tell me that I'm about to quit my job. And he begins to tell me by recommending, um, you know, certain videos to me on YouTube. So all of a sudden I'm on YouTube and I started, started to see like all these videos about people, um, quitting their job. Keep in mind, I had not typed this, um, in the YouTube search bar, like this is just, you know, the, algor the, the algorithm, this is just God using the algorithm to, to speak to me, right? And so anyways, I'm seeing all these videos and I'm like, okay, God, like, are, are you telling me that I'm about to quit my job, like for real? And so I was like, Lord, if you're, if you're really telling me that I'm about to quit my job, I said, I need you to tell me the date. I need you to, to like make it crystal clear that you want me to quit my job, right? So I think it was October the 23rd. Um, I just so, I just so happened to come across a Tabitha Brown video. Okay. And so she was doing like one of her videos that she does on Mondays with, with her brother. And I remember God drew my eyes to this, this board or picture frame or whatever it was in between Tabitha Brown and her brother. Okay. Keep in mind this board or picture frame or whatever it was, they had, always been there but i had never seen it okay maybe god didn't want me to see it then but god allowed me to see it this time okay and he he allowed me to see it for a reason so the board or the picture frame it said quit your day job it was just clear as day i remember pausing the video because i was watching it I paused the video and I zoomed in just to make sure that this board actually said, quit your day job. When I zoomed in and it actually said, quit your day job, I said, Lord, like I know that you're speaking because I remember asking God to make it clear. I said, Lord, make it crystal clear. Like I didn't want to make a mistake. I didn't want to, you know, think that he was telling me to quit my job. Like I wanted to know for sure. And I asked God for a sign because there has been a few times where I have stepped ahead of God. And so, um, you know, there's consequences, you know, good and bad with whatever decision that you make. And so I didn't want to make that mistake again. So I wanted to make sure that this was actually God. So when God gave me that confirmation, I was like, okay, God, I, I, I see you. I hear you. This is clear as day. This is exactly what I asked for. Right? So that was October the 23rd. So that night, that evening, I put in my two weeks notice, okay? As soon as I saw that video, as soon as I saw it said, quit your day job, I put in my notice that evening, right? So that meant that November the 3rd was my last day, okay? So my last day was November the 3rd. So, so November the 3rd comes, I quit my job and I'm happy, okay? I'm happy because at this point, y'all, I was so ready to leave my job. Like, I had been there for going on almost a year. Um, and normally God does not allow me to stay at a job longer than a year. I don't know how other people do it. I don't know how people stay for years and years and years. God must know. Well, he has to know because he created me, but I just can't stay at a job longer than a year. And, and it's never happened for me. And I'm so happy for that. I'm, I'm so th thankful for that. But anyways, so with that being said, God knew I was getting tired of that job. Um, people were just acting crazy. They were acting funny. Like God just allows 
he, he allows his people to get uncomfortable when, you know, it's time for them to leave. Okay. And so you may be at a job right now and you may feel uncomfortable. You, you, you may have been there for a year, maybe two years, and maybe you're getting uncomfortable. Okay. Now, does that always mean that, you know, it's time to go? No, that's why you need to get confirmation. That's why you need to build a relationship with God so that you know for sure. Okay. So don't just take my signs and be like, oh, is it time for me to quit? No, build your own relationship with God because my story is not going to be your story. Okay. So anyways, so my last day was November the 3rd and I was so happy y'all because I finally was about to get a break. Okay. This type of job that I had, I was working hybrid. You know, I was working in the office and I was also working at home. And so I just needed a break, right? So keep in mind that I had already been applying to other jobs because I knew that God was calling me to quit. So I already had like two interviews lined up. However, those interviews did not work out. And when I say that they did not work out, one of the jobs that I had an interview for, they strung me along for about a good two or three months. Okay. They strung me along and then ghosted me. And I was like, what was the point of, you know, stringing me along if you knew that you wasn't going to choose me, you know? But anyway, um, so I, I was applying a job, applying a job, nothing was happening. Okay. Nothing was happening. So fast forward to December. Um, I have to mention that I did have a savings. Okay. So I did have, um, December's rent in my savings account and I had a little bit extra. Okay. So for the whole month of December, I was good. I didn't need anything. I was straight. Okay. The only thing that I was worried about was January. Like when, when, when I knew that January was around the corner, like I started to get anxious because I'm like, Lord, how am I going to pay the rent? You know, you ain't gave me a job yet. Like, how is this going to happen? Right. So it comes around, um, I think it was like December 17th, so, so, somewhere around that. Um, I begin to pray to God and ask him, you know, to provide for me. Cause I was like, Lord, you know, at some point I'm going to need tissue. I'm going to need gas. Um, I'm going to need money for my phone bill, you know, but, um, what else was I asking God for? I was like, Lord, you know, it's about to be a new year around this time. My hair was still red. Um, my hair was growing out. I needed a haircut. And so I was like, Lord, like, um, I'm going to need money for all these things. And I was like, Lord, I, I'm not materialistic. I don't need everything. But all I'm asking is that for the new year that I can dye my hair and, and, and get a haircut. That's all I'm asking for. I don't, I'm not asking for new clothes. All I'm asking for is a haircut and for me to dye my hair. Okay. And so that's exactly what God allowed me to do. Um, God would, I guess he would speak to a subscriber's heart or just a stranger's heart. And I would just get random cash apps random cash apps and it would help me to pay my phone bill it would help me to get groceries it helped me to get a haircut it helped me to dye my hair and so god had answered my prayers y'all god had answered my prayers so january rolls around y'all january rolls around and um my rent has to be paid by the third if it is not paid by the third it is considered late right it is considered late so the third had rolled around, the fourth, the fifth, and I'm like, okay, God, w w look, how am I going to pay this rent, Lord? So my landlord had given me a list of people that I could call or a list of churches I could call for rental assistance, okay? So I thank God um, for my landlord. But anyways, um, they had given me a whole list of people that I can call or churches that I could call for rental assistance. So I'm calling them and I'm calling them and I'm able to speak to them. But at the same time, like, you know, they would be like, okay, you need to call back at this time or you need to try again, or it will just be something. Okay. And so time is going by and I'm like, Lord, look, January is uh, almost up and I need to pay this rent. So I'm like, well, you have to do something. So each day, y'all, each day I was calling and calling and calling and calling. Like I like, like my new job was now to get up early 
and start making phone calls to see if I could get rental assistance. Like I did that every single morning, okay? I got up early and I made it my job to basically call, okay? And so I would do that until I got a hold, uh, and, until I got a hold of somebody, right? And so finally I got a breakthrough and someone, a, a church, you know, says that, you know, th they wanna help me. So I'm like, okay. So I didn't know how much they were gonna help me because keep in mind, um, around this time, it's like January the, the 20th or something like that, 25th, I don't know, something like that. It's getting close to February. And you know, my rent is accumulating, okay? Each day that I don't pay, it is accumulating. And so I'm like, Lord, like, yeah, they, these people said that they're gonna help me, but are they gonna pay like the full rent? And so thank God that they actually did because my rent had accumulated. And when I say accumulated, it, it accumulated, okay? But the people who ended up helping me, they paid everything. They paid everything. And God did not allow them, I'm sorry, God did not allow the check to come through until January the 31st. January, it was either January the 30th or January the 31st. And when I tell you, it felt like it was the last minute, okay? The last moment, even though God provided, but it felt like it was the last minute when he did it. But in God's eyes, he provided right on time. And it was because I was, y'all, I had faith, but I was losing hope. I was losing hope because I was like, Lord, you told me to quit. You told me to quit. So where's the money? Yeah, these people said that they're gonna help me, but how come it hasn't came in the mail yet? Cause I kept checking. I kept, you know, asking my landlord, has it came in, has it came in? And she's like, no. And so she was like, what are you gonna do? And I'm like, listen, they said that it, they put it in the mail. I can't do nothing else. And so the check cleared January the 31st. <coughs> so, my January rent was paid, okay? So, now we are into February, okay? So February comes around, y'all. And keep in mind, I'm now short on money, okay? I'm really short on money. And keep in mind, I have a whole car, okay? We already know I'm paying rent, but I got a whole car. I gotta pay a car note, I gotta pay car insurance. So now I'm missing payments, okay? So keep all that in mind. I'm missing payments because I'm not able to pay the full car note. Like literally, like this is when things starts to like go downhill or it starts to feel like it's going downhill. So anyways, I'm missing car payments. I'm not able to pay my car insurance anymore. And with all of that being said, I also need money for groceries. So I remember things had gotten so tight. It had gotten so tight because I remember I had literally ate, I, I, I had literally eaten everything that was in my kitchen. Like literally, I ate everything, okay? So now that I've eaten everything and there's no money, like no one has, you know, cash out me or nothing like that. I'm like, Lord, Lord. Again, I'm reminding God, you told me to quit my job. Not me, but you. So if you told me to quit my job, where is the provision? So y'all, I start to cry. Not only did I start to cry, I was screaming at God. Cause I think, I, I think, um, I, I think I had like, maybe like $4 in my account. And I used those $4 to like, or maybe like $5. But anyways, I used, like, the last $5 that I had, I used it to, you know, I think I got, like, Taco Bell, and I got, like, this Taco Bell meal or whatever. But anyway, I used my last, um, um, the, the last of the $5 that I had on a meal, and as I was eating it, I was crying, and I was screaming at God, because I was like, Lord, this is all I have. And so, literally, God allowed me to scream at him. He allowed me to, you know, just get everything out. After I was done crying and screaming, he was like, I need you to call this number. 
so I called the number and I knew why God told me to, to call the number. He, he told me to call this specific number for rental assistance. But keep in mind, I was crying because I needed food, okay? So anyway, I'm obedient. I call these people for rental assistance. They say that they can help me. So I'm like, okay, like um, February is going to be taken care of. So anyways, although February's rent is going to be taken care of, I'm still thinking about food, right? I'm thinking about food. I'm thinking about, um, you know, I, I need shampoo at this point. Like, I need tissue. So anyways, I called the number and, you know, they tell me that they can help me with rental assistance. Then after, you know, I'm talking to them, she says, can you, can you come like right now? Keep in mind, this is on a Wednesday. This is, this is around 6 p.m. And so I was like, I can come right now. And she was like, yeah, she was like, we close. I think she said, uh, they closed at nine. And so I was like, yeah, I was like, I'm like, you know, five minutes away. I said, I'll go ahead and, um, and, and go ahead and, 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 and make my way over there. And so she was like, oh, she was like, also, she was like, do you need food? I was like, yes. She was like, well, we can help you out uh, with, with groceries as well. She was like, we already have, you know, bags ready or whatever. She said, so um, she was like, just just uh, come outside when you're ready. And so, y'all, that was my answered prayer, okay? God had answered my prayer because I'm thinking that, you know, this is just for rental assistance. But not only did they help me with, with rental assistance, but they helped me with groceries. And y'all, I'm going to show you guys, because uh, I took a picture, but I'm going to show you guys all the groceries that um they gave me because i put it in my trunk so these are all the groceries that you know they gave me and keep in mind like there was also tissue in there there was also shampoo like the small the small stuff that you know that i also needed like they provided that and so i was so thankful and i was like beating myself up because i'm yelling at god screaming at him like he don't know what he's doing and he does know what he's doing it's just sometimes god has to allow us to you know just get through this journey with just by trusting him like he wants to see you know do you really trust him okay because my faith was being tested it was being tested and again it wasn't the fact that I didn't believe that God couldn't provide. I knew that he could, he could provide because if you guys watch my old video, like it's very old, but if you guys watch my old video of how, you know, God told me to, you know, move to Texas, you'll see that he told me to quit my job. You'll see that, you know, um, I had a whole mortgage, I had a whole home, right? And so literally everything fell apart, but he put it all back together, okay? Just for me to move to Texas. And so I've seen God do a miracle. I've seen God, you know, move in the supernatural. I've seen God, you know, move in the wilderness when I didn't have anything. So it wasn't that I didn't think that God wasn't going to provide. It was a matter of when. Like I was always anxious and worried about, but when are you going to do it, God? Are you going to do it the last minute? How are you going to do it? That was my main questions, when and how. I knew that he was going to do it, but how, okay? And that is not our job. Our job is not to figure it out because if we try to figure it out, y'all, we're going to stress and stress and stress. And that's exactly what I was doing. I was stressing because I was trying to figure it out and God was just telling me to rest in him, okay? So before I get more into it, let me just say that while I was going through this situation, y'all, I was still reading my Bible because I want to make that clear, okay? You cannot. I mean, you can, but I would encourage you all, if God told you to quit your job, if God placed you in a situation to where, like, you know, you have to trust him for everything, it is very important to spend time with him. It is very important to read because whenever I did get anxious, whenever I did worry, whenever I did feel overwhelmed, I had to ask myself, did I read? And sometimes I was I was too tired to read. So sometimes I was too stressed out to read. But I made myself still read his word because I knew if I read his word, I would feel much better. If I read his word, I would get peace. Okay? So I have to mention that. I, I don't want you guys just to think that I was on this journey just by prayer. No, I was also reading his word, okay? I was also spending time with God. I was also, you know, making sure that 
um, I wasn't drifting, drifting away from God just because I was in, you know, this situation. Okay. So anyways, so now January's rent is, um, not January, February's rent is paid once again. I finally got groceries. Um, I also want to mention that, um, a lot of my subscribers, you guys were also booking coaching sessions around this time. So you guys were also helping me out. Okay. I know that a lot of you guys didn't know that God had told me to quit my job. So even though you guys were booking coaching sessions to help yourselves, you were also helping me because you didn't know my situation. And each time that you booked a coaching session, it helped me because I needed that income. Okay. God had told me to quit my job. And so every little bit count, every little bit counted right and so that is how god provided he he continued he continued to provide through you know my subscribers or just random people sending me cash apps like i thank every single one of you guys who either just booked the coaching session or you just wanted to bless me just because like when i tell you i sincerely sincerely thank y'all i really do okay and i pray that god has already blessed you triple fold or it is coming okay so that was February, March, okay? So March comes around, okay? March comes around and I remember I needed money, okay? I needed money and I was like, Lord, okay, how, how are you gonna provide money this time? Because at this point, no one had booked the coaching session. Um, at this point, no one had cash out me. Like I didn't know how God was gonna provide at this moment. And so I'm watching this K Nash video. I don't know if you guys watch K Nash, but I know that God speaks through her. Okay. So around this time she had made this video and, um, it has something to do with provision or finances or something like that. And so she was just basically saying how sometimes God would do, God would tell you to do things, um, to sometimes God will tell you to do certain things to provide for you okay and so she was like sometimes it won't make sense sometimes he'll tell you he'll tell you to sell things okay and so as she was speaking you know I think she had said something like you know you may have to sell your tv you may have to sell you know your furniture or whatever and so I knew God wasn't I knew God wasn't telling me to sell my tv or my furniture but one thing that he placed on my mind was a blocking camera that I had okay so I had a vlogging camera and I think I used it maybe once or twice. Um, most of my videos or the majority of my videos are done on my iPhone, but I had had the vlogging camera and I had only used it once or twice. So God tells me to sell it. Okay. To, to the pawn shop. And so he told me to do this so that I can, you know, have money. And so I didn't know how much money I was going to get. I thought I was going to get at least like $40 for it, but y'all, I took it to the pawn shop. I got $150. Okay. And with that hundred and fifty dollars, with that hundred and fifty dollars, I was able to get groceries, um, and I was able to, you know, get toiletries, you know, stuff that I really needed. Okay, keep in mind, I'm not able to pay my car note. I'm not able to pay my car insurance. So, you know, I, I stopped worried about that. I was just like, you know what? I don't care that they're calling me. I don't care that they're leaving voicemails. Y'all, my phone was on do not disturb. Okay, it was on do not disturb. I made sure that I did not get their calls because I already knew what they were calling about. They want their money. And I'm like, I ain't got it. So if I don't have it, I mean, what is there to talk about? Like, I don't have any money to give to you. So I'm not going to, you know, lie to you and be like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give it to you, you know, during this date. Like, I don't know when the money's going to come in. So I avoided them. Okay. When I tell you, if I show you my call log, call log of how many times I left voicemails, how many times that they emailed me, y'all, I ignored all of that. Okay. My phone was always on do not disturb because I did not want to, um, um, answer their call. Okay. So keep all that in mind. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm officially behind on my car note. I'm officially behind on, um, my car insurance. At this point, my car insurance is canceled, um, by, by March. Okay. By March, my car insurance is canceled. Okay. So I'm like, okay, you know, I can't do nothing about it. You know, until God provides, I can't do nothing about it. So I'm still applying for jobs. I'm applying for jobs and nothing is happening. Y'all nothing is happening. Okay. 
nothing is happening. And I'm like, Lord, like, did, it, did I miss you? Um, you know, am I not trying hard enough? Like, I was just coming up with all this stuff and the enemy was just, you know, in my head, like, you know, you're not doing enough. And it wasn't that I wasn't doing enough. It was just, it wasn't time for me to have a job. God literally wanted me to rest in him. Okay. So during this time where God had me to rest in him, um, he had me to work on my website. Okay. My website was birthed um, in my wilderness season. Okay. So now I have a website. Um, he also had me to, you know, finish up a, a few projects that I needed to do. Okay. And I can't really expound on that because I don't want to speak too soon, but he had me working on some things and I'm so thankful because I remember when he was first telling me, you know, to, to, to do certain things, I would be like, Lord, I don't have time. Like I'm always working or if I'm not working, I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, now I didn't have that excuse. I was no longer working anymore. So God was like, okay, you can write now. You can, you can start on the website. You can do this. You can do that. So anyways, so March comes around and again, I'm, you know, looking at this list of resources or churches, you know, that, that I could call. And about this time I had called everybody. Okay. Everybody who could help. Okay. And so I'm calling everybody and I'm like, Lord, how am I going to pay March rent? So thank God, you know, around this time I had filed my taxes. Um, I was able to file them for free. Okay. God had led me to go online and see if I can file my Texas, Texas, uh, for, for free. And I did that. Okay. Um, and so God gave me grace in that area. I was able to, you know, um, finally get my refund. So my refund came right on time. Okay. So I'm thinking my refund is going to come and I'm going to use that refund for my rent, but I'm thinking that I would have you know, enough, uh, 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 enough where I can like put some in my savings. Okay. Because normally when I get my refund, I like to save. Okay. So when I get my refund, I realize I'm not able to save anything. Like literally all the money went towards my rent and you know, I had a little bit left over to, you know, get groceries and stuff. So I'm like, Lord, I thought that I was going to be able to mooch off of this money, but he was like, trust me, parents, trust me. So I failed to mention guys that it was one point in time where money got a little scarce. Well, it was already scarce, but money was so tight to where I could not pay my phone bill. Okay. And if you guys know, you know, but for the ones who don't know, there was a point in time where I was not able to pay my phone bill. And I remember my phone bill was due and I wasn't able to pay for it. So the next day comes around and I'm thinking that, you know, somebody's going to, you know, cash out me, you know, just in time for me to turn it back on. Y'all, my phone was off for three days. It was off for three days. However, however, supernaturally, supernaturally, I was still able to get on the internet. I was still able to upload videos. I was still able to go live y'all. When I tell you to the ones who saw me when I was on live, like when I first started to get on live and I explained to you guys that my phone was off. And I remember, I remember, you know, the very first day that, you know, my phone was off. I remember thinking like, maybe, you know, it's gonna, you know, go off at any moment. But I remember going to take a shower y'all. And I said, if my phone is still on by the time I get out of the shower, I'm going to do a live. And you guys, for the ones who actually watched that particular particular live, I, I'm not sure if I still have it up. But to the ones who you know that you watched that live, I explained to you guys that my phone was on even though it was technically off. Like the internet was still working and it was working for three days. Okay. Y'all already know the story with Jesus, you know. He rose on the third day. So God did a miracle for me for three days. Even though my phone was technically off, I was still able to get on YouTube. I was still able to upload videos like God. When I tell you, he took care of me. He took care of me because I, I do believe that 
God does not want us also to be bored because he He knows if my phone had been off for real, for real for those three days, I probably would have, you know, been really depressed, okay? Because at least when I'm on YouTube, I can watch movies, you know, whatever. But if I had been like, if I had no type of entertainment, yes, you know, I can read the Bible and all the other stuff. That's great. However, I need some type of entertain, entertainment, especially in hard times. So I wanted to mention that that um that god definitely um he made sure that my phone was still on even though it was technically off and after, after the third day um i think somebody cashed out me or somebody booked the coaching session and i was able to turn my phone back on so again god took care of me okay so i want to mention that around this time before my refund even comes through my landlord was giving me a hard time okay she was giving me a hard time each month because at this point she's not understanding why i can't pay my rent because i'm not you know really giving her a lot of information she knows that i quit my job but she's just thinking at this point i should have a job by now and i didn't you know and i wasn't updating her either so you know she's giving me a hard time and i remember when you know i was working with us a particular organ organization you know about you know getting rental assistance i remember that she was giving me a hard time because they was asking for documents they were they were asking for forms and these forms were documents that she had okay she had to release them in order for me to get rental assistance and so i remember her just blowing me off and just you know pretending and saying that you know she's gonna you know send out the farm and she never did and so i remember around this time god was telling me to keep pushing to keep pushing and to keep knocking and so what he meant by that is even though you know she'd give me the you know the runaround keep you know bugging her like keep bugging her until until, until she does something so that's what i was doing each day i was like hey did you send the form did you do this did you, did you do that and so I had done it. I had done it so much to where I had gotten like physically tired. And I was like, well, I can't do this anymore. And so I'm going to show you guys a video of just showing the frustration that I was going through. Okay. Hey y'all. So this is me pre-recording this, um, before I release my testimony video, because I just got finished calling my, um, landlord. Not only did I call her multiple times and she did answer, but I found out that um, the lady, the, 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 the social worker that, that I'm working with to get rental assistance, I found out that she's still missing a form. So I went to go talk to um, my landlord personally because I got tired of calling her for, you know, to send her my information. I go to her and then she tells me she can't talk. When I tell you, I am so frustrated. <laughs> I'm recording this because I want you guys to see that just because you are believing in something, just because God tells you to do something, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. I literally feel like I'm Moses trying to get trying to get the Pharaoh to let his people go. And I'm like, can you just send this form so that I can get rental assistance? If you could just do your job, I won't have to bother you. I'm just thinking to myself like, I don't even want to keep bothering you about the situation. I don't even want to be in my situation. So I get it. You're frustrated. You're tired of me calling. You're tired of me, you know, uh, asking you, can you send this form? Can you send this form? I get it. It's not my fault. <laughs> Doing the Lord's work is so hard. It's so hard. But anyways, I just wanted to pre-record this. Because and, and today today's date is the um is is the twentieth, but I just wanted to pre-record this, um, because when I tell you guys I am tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. I just want this to be over. I want this to be over. I want God to go ahead and supply my needs, go ahead and send the rental rental assistance so that I don't have to keep bugging people like. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I just want this to be over. Okay. So that's why I'm recording this because I want you guys to see it is not easy. 
it is not easy. I'm doing it, but it's not easy. Like I'm frustrated. I'm tired. Okay. Bye. The, the very next Monday, she finally sends over the forms that I needed and I was able to receive rental assistance. And I think this wasn't even for March. I think this, this was for, for February. So I'm, I'm going back, but, um, we know for March, my rent was paid by my refund. Okay. So April, okay. Not April. So toward the end of February, um, a church reaches out to me. Okay. They reach out to me and they wanted to, you know, come by the, come by my apartment just to, you know, kind of look around just to, you know, see if, you know, they could help me. Okay. And so they're, you know, talking to me and all this other stuff. And, you know, they're asking me like, how did I get in this position? And so we're having this conversation. And so two people came to my apartment. And so this guy who was with the lady, he says, Hey, he says, what type of job are you looking for? And I said, well, I'm looking for a full-time job. And so he was like, well, what kind of work did you do? And so I told him, and so he was like, have you tried this company? And I said, yes. I said, I applied to them. I said, but I said, I haven't gotten a response. I said, I actually applied, you know, many times in, in different positions. And so he was like, try again. And so I'm thinking in my head, I mean, I've tried, tried plenty of times. I've applied to plenty of positions, but no one will respond. But I was like, just in case this is God, I'm going to be obedient. Okay. So I applied again to that particular position. Okay. So keep in mind, that was like toward the end of February. So April comes around. I'm sorry. That was toward the end of March. So um, April comes around. Okay. April comes around and, um, I'm like, okay, God, how are we going to pay this rent? So around this time, I finally get an interview and guess what? I get an interview, um, with the, the organi the, the organization that the man recommended. Okay. And so I was like, okay, God, like you was really speaking through him. And he didn't even know that he was, you know, being prophetic. But anyways, so I get the interview. Hey y'all, so I just wanted to document this. I just had an interview after months of being rejected from other jobs, okay? And this job just reached out to me out of, out of the blue, out of nowhere. And I remember them saying that they would, you know, send me a link to do a Zoom interview. Well, two days go by and they never send me the link. And so I'm just like, okay, maybe they just, you know, chose somebody else. And so y'all, I woke up this morning and they sent the link. Okay. They sent the link maybe two hours before the interview started. And so I was like, oh my God, I got to get up. I got to get ready. So um, anyways, I'm just making this video, just believing that this job is for me. If it is for me, I will post, um, you know, this clip just to let you guys know that I was having faith um, because y'all, I've had so many rejections over the past um, going on, what, four months or five months. So um, yeah, I'll post this if I get the job. All right. Bye y'all. And fast forward, I actually get the job. Okay. So I get the job. My start date is April the 17th. Okay. It's April the 17th. So I started April the 17th, right? So keep in mind, my rent um, has not been paid yet, okay? It has not been paid yet. So I began to work for two weeks. <clears throat> and even though I worked for two weeks, I knew that my check was going to be short because I had not put in like a full two weeks. Because um, I think I started like on a Wednesday. But anyways, um, I knew that my, 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 my check was going to be short. So I was like, Lord, like I have some money for rent. I said, but I don't have, you know, everything. So I was like, Lord, how am I going to pay my rent? And so I remember y'all, I remember just, you know, going to work out, just going to do my, my, my daily routine that I normally do. So I'm working out, you know, like, I'm like, Lord, I don't know how my rent is going to get paid, but I'm just going to trust in you. And I'm just going to continue to do what I normally did so that I don't focus on my rent. So I go to the gym, I'm working out, y'all. While I'm working out, tell me why. Tell me why I get a cash out, a random cash out from a subscriber. 
And y'all, it was $500. Y'all, so I had to come and just talk to you guys real quick. As I was working out, I got a cash app, y'all. And that cash app was the rest of the money that I needed for my rent. When I tell you that God is good, when I tell you when you trust in him, when I tell you that when you continue to go on about your daily life, just trusting that God's got it, when God sees that you trust in him, when God sees that you're continuing to do whatever you want to do, like writing a book or exercising or just going on about your day, when God sees that you're trusting in him by going on about your day, that's when he sends the breakthrough, y'all. So I just wanted to tell y'all, just when I was working out, I got a cash out. The rest of the money that I needed for my rent. God is good. $500. It was exactly what I needed, okay? Because I had already had a, 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 I already had a chunk of change already, you know, from working. But I needed the rest. So how about the $500 was exactly what I needed to pay the full rent? Okay, keep in mind it was accumulating. However, $500 was exactly what I needed. Okay, so as soon as I saw that that person sent me the $500, of course I thanked the person, but I also was thanking God like crazy. Like, I was like, Lord, thank you. Okay, God gave me the grace to still keep my apartment. Okay. To someone else, those letters could have been like, oh man, like I'm losing all hope. But no, like God allowed me to receive the letters and still keep my apartment. Like he he, he basically was saying like, yeah, you're still going to get the letters, but I'm still going to provide for you. I'm still going to take care of you. You're still going to keep your apartment. And the same with my car, even though I wasn't able to make car payments anymore. Okay. Because I had fell way behind on my car payments and my car insurance was all already canceled so i had fell way behind on my um car note and so they had sent me an email basically saying that my car was at risk of um being repoed and thank god it never happened okay like god allowed it to look like it was getting so bad to where you know anybody could have thought like oh man like you're gonna lose your apartment oh man you're gonna lose your car but i didn't lose anything if you if you guys can see i'm still in the same car if you guys watch my videos i'm so thankful that i did my videos in my apartment because you get to see that i never lost my apartment like i still remain in my apartment Okay, so I received five vacate letters and I received an email to let me know that I, that my car was at risk of being repoed and it never got repoed, okay? My apartment, like I never lost my apartment. I never got evicted. So I wanted to share that with you guys to let you know that yes, my life felt like it was falling apart. But God brought it all back together, okay? Now I have a job. Now... I am able to catch back up on my bills. Now I am able to get car insurance. Now I don't have to worry about them repoing my car. Okay, now I don't have to worry about losing my apartment. Like things are coming back together because now I have my job because now God is bringing back, he's bringing things back together. God is restoring me. Okay, I received a wealth transfer a day after my birthday. Like literally God is beginning to restore me. Okay. And so if God can do the same thing for me, he can do it for you too in your situation. With that being said, now that I finally have a job, okay, now that I'm, now that I'm making more money, I'm like, okay, God, like I can finally catch back up on my bills. Keep in mind, because I want to be totally transparent, okay? I'm not going to tell you guys everything, but I do want to be transparent enough to where you guys see that when you're on this journey with Christ, when you're on this faith journey, it is not easy, okay? It is not easy. Um, so there was a lot of times where I cried. There was a lot of times where, you know, like my faith was not, not to say that I was losing faith, but it was like, you know, I was losing hope. I was losing hope, okay? And so um, even though I got an increase, even though I got a new job, the thing was, it felt like because of inflation, Although, although I got a promotion, although I got an increase, it still felt like I was technically struggling because it was like, Lord, okay, now I finally got a job, you know, um, but the thing is, 
by the time that I pay for, you know, rent, by the time that I pay for my car note, and by the time that I get groceries, Lord, like, I really don't have much left over. You know, I really don't have much left over. And I'm like, Lord, like, how is it that I got a job now? Like, I finally got my breakthrough, okay? Um, and, 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 I, and I forgot to mention to you guys that um, how how I got my breakthrough was um, just the fact of, I remember God kept showing me one, two, three, four, okay? I forgot to mention that. But he kept showing me one, two, three, four. And every time he showed me one, two, three, four, I knew that he was, you know, showing, telling me that a breakthrough was coming. Okay. Because one, two, three, four means to break open or to break through. Okay. So anyways, I knew that a breakthrough was coming. So keep in mind, I keep my phone on do not disturb. So on this particular day, I remember I kept seeing one, two, three, four. I remember I kept seeing videos about breakthrough. So I was like, okay, God, you're speaking to me about breakthrough, but where's my breakthrough? And so, um, if you guys have watched my, you know, breakthrough video, you, you know that, um, you, you know how it came. It came through email. And so, that's how I knew that, you know, uh, God had blessed me with the job. Because I'm thinking that they're going to call me, but they actually emailed me. And I didn't immediately get it because my phone was on Do Not Disturb. So, when God started showing me one, two, three, one, two, three, four, when he started showing me, you know, the word breakthrough... God led me to look at my notifications and there was the email. Okay. That's how God let me know that my breakthrough was here. And it was, um, but just going back to, you know, even though I got a job and I'm making more money, inflation, you know, is not making it any better because yes, I'm making more money. However, by the time that I pay rent, by the time that, you know, um, I take care of my needs, by the time that, you know, I pay for, you know, my car note, all this other stuff, like, I really don't have much left over. And so I was like, Lord, like, how is it that I got this breakthrough? But I feel like I'm still struggling. And so what God shared with me is that he's still trying to teach me to trust him. Okay, and so I pray that this resonates with you guys. Like, even if you're in a position to where you know God told you to quit your job, or even if you're in a position to where you know, uh, you're not really sure, you know, uh, how you're gonna make it, even if God does bless you with a job, you're like, Lord, like I got a job, but it's, it's still not enough, you know. And so, God is trying to teach us to trust Him, okay to trust him because even when even when you still don't have you know enough or you think that you don't have enough like God always comes through and when I tell you like I I have not lacked okay even when things you know became scarce even after I got a job like every time I would spend money and I'd be like Lord like this is my last $10 until I get paid in two weeks he he would put it on somebody's heart to bless me to, to bless me with a cash app. Like when I tell you, like God continue, continually shows me that He is my provider. So I'm sharing this with you guys to let you to let you know that even after you get a job, even after you get a breakthrough, even if you're still struggling, God wants to make sure that you are aware that He is your provider. He doesn't want us to depend on a job. He doesn't want us to depend on a salary. Okay, and I just want to make this very clear. Yes, I have family. Yes, family could have helped me. And I know that some of my family are going to watch this. That's neither here nor there. But I want to make sure that I make this known that if you guys are in a position to where, you know, God told you to move to where like he moved you away from your family. I, I have to share that sometimes God will do that so that you can depend on him. Okay, because yes, I could have easily called my mom, I could have easily called my dad, or some type of family member. I could have called them and be like, Hey, I need help. God didn't want me to do that, He didn't. Okay, when God moved me, I knew because He told me, but I knew that He wanted me to trust Him. Because when I was still living around my family, you know, if, if I knew that I needed help, I knew that I can call my mom, I knew that I can call my dad. Okay. And so when God moved me away from my family, now that, you know, I'm hours away from them, I have to now trust, on, tr trust in God, okay? So now God has taught me so well, or he has trained me so well to where 
when something happens or to where to where I'm lacking something, my first thought is not to call my parents. My first thought is not to be like, mom, can you help me? Can you send me money? My first thing is, God, what do you want me to do? My first thought is God, okay? And so that's what God wants his people to do if he's moved you away from your family. He wants to train you to depend on him, not your family, okay? Now, if God leads you to, you know, ask, ask your family for money or, or for help, do that. But for the majority of the time, if he moves you away from them, he wants you to trust him, okay? So I know that this is a long video, um, but I just wanted to, you know, show you guys that God can provide and he will provide in the wilderness. Okay. And I'll also share this, this little clip with you guys showing you that even though I had hard times, even though, um, there were times where, you know, I didn't have no money. Okay. When I tell you, I still enjoyed myself whenever I did receive money. Um, I wasn't, you know, irresponsible, but if God gave me something that if God gave me enough money that was left over, I would go out and take myself out to eat. Okay. I wouldn't splurge, but I would take myself out to eat. I would take myself to, to get a, a, a little dessert or something, you know, like I'm going to show you guys a clip of me just enjoying myself. Hey y'all. So I just wanted to, um, do a quick video, um, in the midst of my circumstance, um, right now, my bills, all of my bills are not paid because of, you know, God telling me to quit my job and, you know, me trusting him. But as I'm out and, you know, my car could literally get taken at any moment because I have not paid my car note. I just wanted to, to let you guys know that it is very possible to enjoy yourself in the midst of, you know, God allowing your life to fall apart instead of me saying, okay, God, you haven't allowed me to pay my car note. You haven't allowed me to do all these certain things. So I'm just going to sit in the house and mope. And I decided literally to take myself out for breakfast. I'm sitting here watching YouTube videos. I'm sitting here editing my YouTube videos. Like, I'm just sitting here just being in my own company, enjoying myself, spending time with God. Like, it's very possible to have peace in the midst of chaos. To have peace knowing that God is going to take care of everything. So I just want to encourage you guys, if you are in a situation to where God told you to quit your job or, you know, you did something that God told you to do, you were obedient, but you know, your life is falling apart now. Let this be an encouragement. Again, I'm sitting here in my car as my car note has not been paid for three whole months. I still have my car. God is good. I am trusting God. And I know he's going to work it out because he's put me in this situation before. I'm used to this. I'm used to God stretching my faith. So it's not that I don't trust him. I do trust God. I know that he's going to work it out. But I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like to be in the situation. Your life could be falling apart, but you're deciding to be happy. You're, you're deciding to have peace knowing that God is going to work it out. If he called you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Okay? Bye, y'all. I pray that this little clip inspires you to still enjoy yourself in the midst of your trials. All right? Talk to you guys later. And if you want to book a coaching session, okay, go to my website at parismaze.com and all the coaching sessions will be listed. All right? Talk to you guys later. Bye, y'all.